Hello everybody, this is Catholic Dad, episode number 447. Uh, Galileo and face masks. A lot of you might not realize what these have to do with one another, but I'm going to explain it to you. So I'm reading a book right now called the, or I actually just read it, um, The Psychology of uh, Totalitarianism. It was written by Matthias Desmet. He's a Belgian uh, psychologist. He's very good. Um, and he's been studying speech for the better part of his professional career. And uh, he, he wrote a book essentially called The Psychology of Totalitarianism, which uh, borrowed on Hannah Arendt's book back in 1951, The Origins of Totalitarianism. Uh, but in that book, so how does, what does this have to do with Galileo? In that book, um, he talks about Galileo in the late 1500s. He's sitting in the cathedral in Pisa, uh, Italy, and he's watching that the lamps, when they, the wind blew, they blew at a certain frequency. And uh, the lamps all blew at a very similar pace, and they all had a, a very same period in terms of the, uh, the time that they swung back and forth. And so he went back to his home or whatever he did, and he set up a laboratory experiment, and he tried it. He's 17 years old, right? And he, and he uh, wrote a mathematical formula for what makes pendulum motion work. And uh, it turns out that the arc length of the pendulum is the only thing that really matters for the time period of the swing. It doesn't have to do with the mass or the shape or anything else of the pendulum, just the arc length of the pendulum. And um, this, is a, this is a mathematical law. It's a mathematical certainty uh, to this day, by the way. Think about this 17-year-old kid back in the uh, late 1500s figured this out. Um, well, anyway, um, so uh, there was a clockmaker named uh, Christian Huygens. Um, and he noticed on his walls when he made the clocks, and they, they all had the same pendulum, and he'd start them up, and all the clocks were going like tick-tock, tick-tock, all different, right? All the clocks... Uh, were different, but over the course of a couple days, eventually the clocks would be ticking in harmony, like all the pendulums would be swinging in harmony, which means, by the way, which means that um, the pendulums don't follow Galileo's law. And so we think Galileo's law is good enough, and it probably is for mathematical certainty, but there's something else. There's something within the uh, clocks themselves that uh, like disobeys the law of Galileo, uh, so they all match up. And so clocks living in harmony on a wall, they'll actually respond to one another and they'll resonate with one another, the essence of life, essentially. And you can actually create a wall of clocks where you have uh, free swinging clocks, right? And then you have um, a digital clock and you could program the digital clock to keep exact timing and that will not line up with the other clocks. Say. And so um, uh, Desmet in the book called that the dead clock, right? Uh, because it's not uh, responding to the essence of our living world, right? There's something greater than what we can explain as human beings, something greater than our physical understanding uh, of the, the physical world. And this is literally 500 years, almost 500 years later, and we still cannot figure out why Galileo is wrong. Like, and we've tried to figure it out. Um, well, anyway, and then he goes on to the book, and he goes on to the book and states that humans, when we interact, and when we speak to each other, we're always studying each other, like facial expressions, muscular tone, uh, breathing, uh, cadence of voice, uh, you know, tenor of voice, ups and downs. And we can respond to each other in 0.2 um, seconds, which is five times faster than we respond to traffic. And it's approximately the same amount of time that a major leaguer responds to a fastball. It's, it's just an amazing um, interaction that we have with one another. And he, um, he states that in... Uh, that our human interaction with our voices and our speech, it's what makes us uniquely human. And that we, um, when, we when we're talking to one another, we're actually dancing with one another. We're in this, like, uh, this rhythm of life where uh, he even says we actually make love when we're talking to one another. And, um, and so what is causing us to be able to respond to each other in such a, a fluid, uh, quick uh, uh, manner? Well, it may be the same thing that makes the clocks talk to one another. Like the clock, the essence of life, that, uh, that je ne sais quoi, that thing you don't understand or the thing we can't possibly understand. And what does it do to our psychology to take that away? And so, um, and th I was actually thinking about this in terms of uh, the masking of everybody. Like when you take away the face with the mask, um, you're taking away a lot of physical cues that we need. We need to respond to each other in this 0.2 uh, seconds, right? And then also, not just the masks, but the electronic communications all the Zoom meetings and everything else, like like we can't respond to each other as quickly. Is that doing something psychologically to us? And uh, Desmond, he, he called that uh, the, the dead pendulum on the wall, the digital dead pendulum, uh, because it doesn't respond with the essence of life with the other clocks. Perhaps we're doing that to the individual human being. And, um, and what uh, Hannah Arendt in 1951, she called this the atomized individual. 
And this atomized individual is rife, re ready for the making for totalitarianism. Because when you become an atomized individual, you become desperate. You feel uh, alone. You become, uh, you feel like you're, you've been abandoned by the world. And you will do anything to get out of that, right? You will do anything to get out of that atomized state, uh, including go along with a lie or go along with a strong man or go along with totalitarian belief system. And, um, and so the masking, but, oh, so Hannah Arendt, by the way, said the most important part of totalitarianism, like the most important component is making people feel alone. And so I can't think of anything that divides human beings, like anything that we've done other than quarantining us to our own rooms, uh, like the mask does to people, because it takes away that je ne sais quoi of life. It takes away that human interaction. I mean, there's a large chunk of your brain studying the faces of other human beings. And if we take out the face, uh, what are we doing to human interaction? And in addition, by the way, humans study the face to know if somebody's a threat or somebody's friend, somebody's foe. And so if we take away those signals, we're going to induce all sorts of anxieties in people that weren't necessarily, wouldn't have been an anxiety anyway. And so um, I guess that's all I wanted to say. I think the dead clock on the wall, one second. The dead clock on the wall, um, the, the dead pendulum on the wall under Galileo, is what we may be turning ourselves into by wearing the masks. Because while the clocks can speak to one another, and we don't know how they do it, we don't know what that je ne sais quoi, that essence of life is, it is probably the thing that makes life worth living. It's, it's, a, it's a little iota of chaos in our life that um, makes life not bland, not stale. Well, the mask also might actually take away that je ne sais quoi, that little essence of life, how we can have that dance, that lovemaking amongst one another when we talk and have a conversation, that bonding. And so, um, you know, and I don't know if you know this, but uh, the book uh, in the book called uh, The Devil and Karl Marx, the, uh, the, the communistic um, uh, resistance, the, the Christians that were getting together, uh, really the resistance was eating together, was uh, speaking to one another, like uh, talking to one another, just being around one another because that creates this unique human bond that you can't get when you're atomized, when you're individualized, when you're, when you're not part of the milieu of clocks on the wall. And so this is what Galileo had to do with the face mask. Galileo could describe a dead pendulum. He can do that. Um, but he did not and was unable to describe the essence of life that makes clocks work with one another in an organized rhythmic fashion. Much like we can describe how human society is supposed to be. We're so, we, we think we can actually create the perfect human society through communism or the Great Reset or the COVID mandates or whatever else. But we can't do that because we don't know the essence of life that we're taking out. That human interaction, that little smile, that smirk, the raising of the, you know, the, the side of the mouth, the, the quirkiness of people. Uh, because that's the essence of life. And so I would, I would, um, I would ask you to resist. Resist anybody trying to tell you you can't be human with another human being, uh, that you need to cover yourself up just to be safe and a good human being. Those people are totalitarians, they're tyrants, and you need to resist them. Anyway, this is Catholic Dad making you think about it. Please like and subscribe, get to Mass, and pray the daily rosary. God bless you all.